Okay, slow time of the year for the park. Uh, just regular cleanup, leaves, ticks, uh, garbage. First one day, just keeping the park clean. We rented the community center uh, 52 hours, and we had six animal control work orders. So that's all that the park had. Right. Well, other than our usual stuff, um, I guess I guess the big news about us would be uh, this LME money we have coming, which that's that's where the state uh, gives us so much money. They contribute so much money to our paving, but then we have to, you know, become partner with that. And uh, the mayor and I have uh, looked at a. Uh, we have decided that we're going to do Crabtree Street. It's going to, is next on our list. West Crabtree. West Crabtree. Well, West Crabtree Street. And uh, and then we're we're hoping and we're looking at Lookout Circle over behind the high school, which that'll take. Uh, you know, we'll have to get into our spots money for that. But well, we have to match LD by thirty percent. Right. It's each year is based on our mileage which we have 19.98 miles of city streets. Uh, we started getting this once me and Mama got into office our first year. We seen we wasn't getting it. We've done the paperwork and we've been blessed to get it. Uh, so Splash will be added to that and we'll have that funding to do that and some of the extra work we gotta do. We found out that some of the stuff at Lookout Circle in the past was not done properly and sealed correctly from all the bidders that come up with met with Timmy and Mondo. Uh, so we're gonna make it better. And that's what it's for. And, uh, we're blessed to have it. We'll continue. Mounts usually in the thirties each time, depends on what what how much they're given per mileage at the time. So they're a little bit helps. And I know we have you know I've, I've spoken with some residents and I know we have streets that are that are probably worse than West Crabtree Street. But the reason we chose that, we talked about it last year, and we want to go ahead and finish Walnut since we started it, but uh, it's so heavily used. You know, everybody in the city uses that, that story. It's just, it's, so. It's coming apart by, uh, if you look at the gravel, all the patch we've done, throwing up against the side, and with our thousand some students there in our buses, it's getting beat up pretty bad. We've got a water issue as well. But Lookout Circle is next on the radar. And, and, and splots wise, when we are planning our splots, we put a half a million dollars for paving projects for the next six years. And uh, so we're going, if funds are well and everything's done, we can maybe see some more, but I, I know that's a big thing to try to get more roads paved and fixed. And one of the things that in the past that we uncovered at the street department and sewer department working on our storm sewers, our manholes, our water valves. They just paved over and didn't do it. One of the things we made sure the contractors are raising these up. Uh, so if you have a water valve broke or we found a road that was paved over twice over five storm drains that we fixed a few years ago. So we're getting those things marked and make sure that they see them, they raise them, and they work with the water company or the sewer department gas company for valves that, that make kits that raise those things up so they can see them. So. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, a report for Commissioner House uh, under tab four, she had, there was 22 underground locates, six emergency locates uh, from 811. There was 12 sewer calls that had one sewer tap and they had one sewer line inspection. We served uh, last month. Monthly inspections are six total remodels going on throughout the city that they're currently uh, checking on. There is a property in review. A lot of times the, the people will come and sit down with inspections to see what they got to do on properties that needs improvement or to meet codes of anything. So that's what they're here for before somebody invests in the property or getting it up to code for business wise. Uh, a lot of things that 
can help, and that's what they're here to do. So please come by and see them if you got any questions. Electrical, there's a total of four, uh, five electrical and HVA plumbing inspections going on throughout. There's an addition, uh, two remodels, and accessory building. Fire department, there's five related fire calls, three accidents, three medical calls, seven standbys, a total of 79 canceled while en route calls to other departments, a total of 97 calls per month of, uh, for the fire department. Um, I step into the sewer, the mayor's report. Today we had our regional uh, comprehension plan uh, meeting on some things that we're doing a five year uh, update that. It's a joint city county for our regional uh, comprehension plan that we have to do. Uh, there were members from the city, county, IDA, uh, school board, school uh, superintendent, things that were there. And a few months ago, I gave y'all out the packets of all those things where we were, what we're doing, and just kind of review. Be looking for a questionnaire that will be coming out in the next month, month and a half. It will be online. Uh, Lions with Dave was there too. Ms. Ms. Jane was with us there as well. The group, any group. Uh, there's questions I ask. What's improvement? What's some things people want to know? What want to know what people are thinking of current things in the city? We've got a lot of improvement, a lot of tasks that needs to happen, and we want to pick. You know, like we had 12 and 13 items and things that need to be improved. What do you like about the community? Do you, do you live in the county, work in the county, or do you live in the county, work in another county, city, uh, or do you come from another, I think one of the questions, do you come from another state or county to work in the county? And so it's things that we need to get together. We're going to be asking for help to get this in and be online, but you can just snap in. We're also going to be working with our seniors to get it out through um, the food banks, through senior building, uh, the Meals on Wheels, and maybe send home with some schools, or possibly get some paper copies out, because some folks still don't like to deal with technology. We want to make it readily available. Copies can be at City Hall, County Commission, Library, anywhere. Uh, we're even talking with our uh, local churches. Again, yeah, one of the preachers was there today from that. We might give copies to the churches, let them give them out, make a mention of it, take some time to help. But it's community input to all organizations of the government improvements and it's also for other grants just like I talk about hazard mitigation during disaster there's also grants for improvements if you've got it in your comprehension plan and you do this every 10 years uh, this is a five year just kind of update and refresh and see where we go on if there's projects being completed during this time or projects still continue but it's like I got a lot of good things we, we reviewed the one that they done at Walker and another county today Kind of put our speed and had a lot of good conversation. That's what it is, is people from everywhere sitting here talking. Now we need everybody to get involved and see what their thoughts are. So I'll be looking for that. Please uh, tell folks to do that. Um, some of these uh, state ARP funding for our public safety, uh, police department and fire department has returned in. We got uh, the deposits in electronically. We had to send back, I think, on a couple of some paperwork, but that will be coming out soon and we'll be cutting. We're, we're waiting on the last draw for some reason. Right. So once all that's in, we'll be giving the current officers that were employed and working with the city of Trenton during August of 21 and the volunteer firefighters. The paid officers will be getting $1,000. Again, this is from the governor's grant and the volunteer firefighters will be getting $300. So we're waiting on the last round of that. We had a few corrections to get back in. So we thank the state for that and the work of the clerks getting that information in. We'll step into the financials. So we'll be behind tab three. Excuse me, behind tab two. We'll start with general fund. General fund ended January 31st, 2022, $659,846.99. Bank reconciliation to Counties behind that. Uh, profit and loss for January 22, page 2. Uh, gross revenue received for the month is $158,236.10. Uh, 
page seven, total expenses for the month of January is $213,309.12. Since this being the first month of the budget, uh, we don't have the profit and loss. Uh, if we make other companies for that, we can give that to them in their box for their budget stuff. Uh, our savings account, this is one that we constantly put $2,000 a month in. It's currently in the budget. And we talked about this. Have you seen what one month of January cost us nearly $200,000? But our current savings account is $123,337. Reconciliation follows. ARC funding, uh, I do want to report on this. We are meeting tomorrow uh, with our uh, working with the infrastructure of our sewer. We're meeting with our engineers tomorrow to sign the first contract of building for the engineering of the barge screens we talked about. Uh, we're working on some numbers also for the industrial uh, fees that we've also discussed last month. So Dwayne, Dylan, myself, and if Madam Commissioner is not able to make it, we're going to be pushing her on the speakerphone with us to be listening. Uh, we're meeting tomorrow to get more information on that, but we will be signing the contract the engineering out of this, so we'll, this will be changing much. But currently, we still have the $401,712.38. Also, currently watching, and I've also put an email in to the Office of Planning and Budget of the status of what month the second half of this will be coming in. So, we need both halves to make that first project work. So, we'll be keeping you up to date on that. Also, uh, sewer fund. Is your next bank is your next check account of citizen is sixty thousand nine hundred twenty one dollars and thirty seven cents. Bank reconciliation as follows: hotel motel fund ending January ninety six thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and sixty six cents. Reconciliation as follows: uh, police department uh, special fund is two thousand four hundred eighty four dollars and thirty seven cents. Reconciliation as follows. Trent Fire Department Special Fund is $1,047.78, and this is money that is raised and used for our current explorers program. We turn that, all this over to them, and the funds they've made and put together, and we put this money back into the youth as well as for fire and use. Reconciliation as follows. Uh, under tab three, your splash obligations for 2015. Bond construction is $89,852.96. We still have a few projects to come out of that. We have one check uh, still out that we haven't moved yet for the vehicle uh, for the parts and rec. But Commissioner uh, Powell and myself met on some other things, and the brand new trucks have a lot of trouble that we hadn't even got. Uh, we told the salesman that we don't want it now because it's had two or three problems. They warranted it, and every time it comes back, it's a certain thing. Uh, so we're asking them to match that truck on 22 trucks instead of 21 trucks. So they're currently working on that for us. Uh, they had a gas gauge issue. It took forever to get the parts from Ford. And then it's come up with a bad vibration, and they've changed several things. It's still vibrating, so we just felt it's best. To, before we spend brand new money, we are just telling them to take that lemon back, and we'll get us another one. He's got several 22s coming back in. We're the first option to get those. He's got a few other cities that's already spoke for, but we're going to be getting one. Uh, again, that splash fund is there. Uh, it was, oh, excuse me. That was a 2018 splash. Excuse me. Yeah, it was $89,852.96. Current 20, 21 splash ending January. Is eighty three thousand one hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty cents. But uh, I spoke with our deputy clerk for uh, county, Rebecca Jones, who's also our CPA. Today, when we in uh, April, was going over the balances. We are receiving another check this week. Uh, this should be the fifth month of payout for Splash. Uh, we got two uh, July and August, which is eighty three thousand. $189.30. We've got a check that will be coming possibly Friday or Monday to us. It's $128,430.11. So we're going to have a little over $200,000 in our current splots. And that's some other things that I'd like to discuss later on. We've got our current preliminary splots list. Remember we went over that in our work sessions? 
we need to start looking at some priority things and making sure we got budget. But with that right there, I'd probably cover some of the current projects that we've got. We can't start obligating, but we're getting around forty-three to forty-five thousand dollars a month. The SPLOS hits the county the last week of the month in their checking account, so as they're balancing books. Within the two weeks, they will be writing our portion of that check out uh, each, each week. So uh, we'll be staying on that and make sure it's growing. That is my report. That is the financials of the city in January 2022. A motion to approve financials is ready. I make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Norris. I second. Second by Commissioner Powell. Is there any other discussion? If not, we'll motion to uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All righty. Uh, Ms. Eloise Gass, I don't see her here. Uh, Jennifer, is there anything to report from them that you know of? Uh, I know plants, but I don't hold a bunch of perennial bulbs uh, recently in the city park and along the initial segment of Town Creek Trail. So there's can lilies and daylilies and tulips and crocuses all along there. Um, and with regard to the trail itself, um, the handrail extension is being installed. They were there yesterday and today, they'll be back tomorrow, I think they'll be finished tomorrow. Um, and we are actively fundraising for the mural. Yeah, I see they're working with that. I will, this Friday, I believe is Arbor Day, uh, I need to add to the new business, and I bring it up. We do have a uh, proclamation. Do you have a proclamation? Okay, okay, we'll bring it up on the new business. We'll go grab it here shortly. But Miss Eloise is going to be planting a tree um, somewhere around the courts facility. They're trying to nail down the location. The location she picked, there's way too much underground power, water, sewer, and drainage and communications, large communications for Trent Telephone and Dade County that retire buildings on. So we're trying to make that work for her. We got too many conduits and wires that we need. can't let trees grow over uh, with some of the issues that run across. So that's Friday, I believe, at... And now what's the street for in honor of him? I don't know what she's got it in honor for, but it's this Friday. It's, Day, it's just this National Arbor Day. Day. Yeah. Okay. I believe it's Arbor Day for the state of Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. And then yeah. National Arbor Day is actually in April. But in this area, it's a lot more appropriate to plant trees now than it is later in the spring. Do you think we're planning on the courthouse? Courts facility. Courts, oh, the new courts facility. Uh, courts facility. Courthouse okay, I was is thinking, where, Yeah, I was thinking the courthouse. The courts facility, she was going to put it on the back side next to where the regular uh, walkway was going to be, the scenic, right. the scenic creek walk. But the whole bank, we've got six big four-inch conduits that run all the way around behind that. That Trent Telephone got easement on. We've got fiber and gas, and we got all types of stuff in there. We just don't want any trees in certain areas because this is just down the road and causes trouble. Even with a less intrusive, we, we just don't want the headache of it in case something happens. So we're trying. My Taya's trying to work that out with her. But that's this Friday. You know what time, Jennifer? I'm I, sorry, I'm not. Yeah, please. Yeah. All right. We have anybody from public library? I know they've been very busy. And that leads to Miss Jane Dixon. Slides for today. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to just remind you of something that's coming up real soon, and then tell you some other news. But uh, if you'll mark your calendars for February the twenty fourth. Okay, that is the next what you call the lunch and learn. It will be at your civic center here, the, at the, the building. Uh, the lunch will be provided. It will be catered by, um, what's it called, Hope, Hope House. House. Hope, Hope House. House. Yeah, Hope House will be catered by them. Uh, so you should expect a very good meal. Uh, the speakers will be Alex, your mayor, uh, Ted Rumley, and Josh Engel. And what they will be doing will be talking about new projects or things that they're expecting possibly will happen with our, in our community. So that, I think it will be a real good thing for business. So if you all as individuals would like to come, please do. It's the 24th, you just need to call the Alliance for Day and make a reservation so we will know how much food we need 
uh, and that would be greatly appreciated if you want to come to that. The 24th. Time. Now I have two items that I need to check. Um, 11.30 to 1. Okay? I don't know what Alex is going to say, but anyway, we'll just let that be a surprise to all of you all. So, uh, next thing is, this is a little ways down the road, but I wanted to go ahead and at least introduce these two items to you. April the 5th, we're having an event at Dade County High School in the Commons area there, and it is called a career fair. Now, the reason is, is I don't know where these statistics came from, but this helped to generate the activity for this. There are 154 seniors graduating from Dade County High School this year. They are thinking at this time that there are 70% of the 154 will, are not, at this time, going to college. Now, of 154 kids, those who are going probably have plans made. I mean, this is February. So we have over 70%, they're saying, of the 154. You wonder what is that number? Do you know off the top of your head? 70% of 154? Of 154, yeah. Well, it'd be 70. Right over 100. About, what? Right over 100. All right. Something like that. 85 to 90, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, of the students will be in someone, looking in someone's workforce. So what we're doing is we're going to have, in, in Day County, the businesses that, will, that can be hiring. And y'all, there are a lot of them over in the industrial park. They all need workers. So we're going to be hosting this career fair during the school day for the students to come by, see what happens. If you've ever seen some of the things like at um, Vanguard, I know they had a display once that was showing some things that they do. Why, wow, you would be so surprised. If you saw the things that Integer does, you know, they make the valve piece that goes in, uh, in for a catheter for hearts. Uh, it's just amazing the things that are happening in the city and that if, I believe that students who would choose not to go to college could see these things that are available, they may get interested in it, and there could be what's called career opportunities. That means they could work there a long time, and we need families in our community who have good incomes so they're not just totally stressed all the time. I, today at that plan to me, and I heard one of the commissioners say that there are no more starter homes. You know, and I'll guarantee you, most of us who are of our age, either as a family, we started in a starter home. And we grew to such financially and with the siblings, grew to a place that we had a different home later. So I think we've got 70% of those kids are going to be running around somewhere. So we're offering this for them, and this is going to be April the 5th at the high school. So you may want to drop by, or you may want... Um, I mean, even as a small a business as Monda operates, somebody in this town may be interested in looking at making that a career for them. You know, some kind of flooring, some kind of something. Monda's done real well with that. And other people could do, I'm not suggesting competition, I'm saying that it's a career opportunity for kids. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say to you is we're, at, we're in one other activity that we will be participating in that we did last year. But y'all, we wanted to make it well known that it's something we're going to do this year in a, a much bigger way. And that is 4th of July celebration. You know, the uh, what was it? July 5th, I think, uh, Nathan announced the first meeting for the 222 fair, okay? So he is desperately working to pull together volunteers. So the Alliance for Day is going to be doing a number of different things with the, the fair, so if we want you to get aware of it, know what's happening, and know all the different people in the community that are going to be pitching in and doing something, because the idea for this year's fair, from what I understand, is bigger and better. Now, we know how many people showed up last year. It was a fabulous event, and we're wanting to break that number this year and get the people in our community out there. Remember, the first time it ever started was Nathan sat and said, you know, kids around here have nowhere to go on the 4th of July. They don't have a thing to do, so we're going to pick something for them to do. And we have it in this community now. So we want you to know the Alliance is working with that. And the last thing I'd like to mention to you is, because I'm not sure that people understand this, 
Um, you all that don't own businesses here, okay? Terry, do you own a business? No, Okay. You don't own a business, but you know what? You give to this community, you attend these meetings, you listen to people talk to you about our community. You are a person who demonstrates the fact that they are interested in the well-being of Dade County citizens. You can join the Alliance. Individual people in our community, I looked at the list the other night of the new people that are joining. It's getting to where we've got more and more individual people who are like Terry, who say, hey, look, I don't have a business, but I want to be a part of this because it's a good thing. I saw my neighbor's name on the list that she had joined, and I thought, I wonder what's happening. So I asked her, I saw her out in the yard, I said, what are you doing? She says, I like to know that I can do something for somebody in our community sometimes that I may not ever go do anything, but I want to give to help people who can do it, do it. So, if you know individuals who would like to join, like you all could all join, okay? I mean, anyone can join in the Alliance, and certainly you should, you know. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> I'm teasing you, he knows that. No, uh, but do, we, uh, yeah, all of us could be individual members. I believe it's $50. Uh, and then there's also a senior discount. So some of us in this room uh, might be joined as a senior discount. Terry, think that'd be good. So uh, we just want to kind of prod people along to understand this isn't a show just for the businesses. It's for everybody who's interested in the well-being of our community, our children, and our families. So thank you, Alex. That's all I have tonight. Thank, thank you. Jennifer gave us an update on Town Creek Trail. Any legal matters, you know, commissioners we need to discuss or any unfinished business? Um, unfinished business. Right, any citizen participation I'd like to speak to the commission for the new business? Right, if not, we'll go into new business. Uh, Items to consider from the workshop will be the approval of the agenda, approval of the meeting minutes. Uh, the do, I do want to add the proclamation for uh, February 18, 2022 is Arbor Day in the City of Trent for encouraging all citizen efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and support our city's community and forestry program. Uh, splash. We do have an item that Terry sent out and discussed and we picked the bidders uh, for uh, the door uh, closures and insulation for the building for $1,840. Uh, who was that coming, Terry? M and something, I believe. Uh, I'm, that's all right. And then uh, power to get the 100 amp power to run the electrical and exhaust fans we need. The Tri-State Electric is a little bit of $3,295. Uh, the heater systems, uh, heat systems for the winter from 72 degrees is $2,750, and they were a little bitter. Also, to install five new, uh, five new picnic tables, the ones we had to remove from the tree, and get, get them in different areas to not disturb the tree's roots. These are a uh, metal with a heavy plastic and ADA accessibility for $7,132, and we're going to estimate for the concrete bolts and rebar, uh, $1,200, for a total of around $16,200 for the items uh, for SPLOST. We also approve the joint resolution of the Trent Day County Hazard Mitigation Planning, R-2022-1. And that's everything we need to vote for under new business. Is there any discussions or additions or deletions, Commissioner? Oh. Uh, we'll take a motion to approve the items for new business. Uh, motion by Commissioner Pye, second by Commissioner Wood. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, <coughs> motion carries. I will ask for executive session for personnel. Uh, we can discuss uh, some items that we received from personnel. <coughs> I'd like the motion to go into executive session for personnel. I'll make a motion. Make a motion by Commissioner Wood. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Powell. Discussion. Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we'll be in executive session over personnel for a few, and we'll be back. Thank you.